Hi there, fifth graders, and welcome into Mr. Tabar's Science Lab today. Now, my science lab right now is currently in my kitchen, as you can see, but it will eventually be taken outside, and that's because today's experiment could get a little bit messy and a little bit explosive, as we will see. Now, today's demonstration is going to be what happens when these two very common household chemicals mix together. These are probably two chemicals you have in your kitchen right now, if you were to look or ask your parents. Those two chemicals being baking soda and vinegar. Now you may have seen baking soda and vinegar mixed together before. One of the most popular experiments we do with that reaction is the, uh, the volcano experiment. That's a very fun experiment, but I want to take it a little step further today. And I want to use the baking soda and vinegar reaction today to create what's called a bottle rocket. So in addition to my baking soda and vinegar, obviously, I also have for my materials a bottle rocket which you can see is made of a plastic water bottle, uh, three pencils that it's standing on, like three legs, held in place by some masking tape. In addition to that, I also have a rubber bouncing ball. Now, I'll show you what I'm going to use this for in a moment, but that's going to be a key part of the experiment as well. So let's walk through the process of how my bottle rocket is made, and hopefully we will get a very good uh, bottle rocket launch out of that reaction today. Okay, so the first step of creating my bottle rocket is I'm going to take my vinegar and I'm going to pour it into my bottle rocket until the bottle rocket is about maybe one third of the way full. I don't want to fill it all the way, not even halfway, but about one third. All right, and that may be a little bit more than one third, but I think that's going to be good to start with. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create my baking soda fuel tank for my rocket. Now what that's going to entail is taking a little bit of paper towel, maybe about yay big, it's perhaps about uh, 5 inches long and about 2 inches wide, don't need anything bigger than that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour about, say, about 3 tablespoons worth of baking soda onto that bit of paper towel there. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I don't want to overdo it because I do need my fuel tank to be able to fit inside of my rocket, but I think something like that is going to work out nicely. So what I want to do next is I'm going to seal up my baking soda fuel tank there with a, a bit of tape. It may take a few pieces. Then I'm going to sort of wrap it up into itself, fold it up like so and tape it closed. So now I have that baking soda in a bit of a pouch there. So there we have my baking soda fuel tank there. This is what will eventually mix with the vinegar in order to create our reaction today. Alright folks, at this time my bottle rocket is all prepared and is ready to launch. So in quick summary, here's what we can expect to happen. First, remember, in the bottom part of my bottle rocket I have a bunch of white vinegar Dangling from the top there, in that bit of paper towel, is my baking soda fuel. And at the top of the bottle rocket, I have that rubber ball that I wedged in there as deep and tight as I could. So what's going to happen, everybody, is this. When I'm ready to launch, I'm going to pick up my bottle rocket, flip it upside down, and rest it so it's resting on uh, the erases of the three pencils there. So you can imagine that when it's flipped upside down, the vinegar will start to mix with the baking soda which is going to start to cause that reaction, which will begin to uh, release a whole bunch of carbon dioxide gas. You're going to see it when it starts to bubble up with a bunch of white bubbles inside. Those bubbles are carbon dioxide gas. Now what will happen over a few seconds is as more and more carbon dioxide gas builds up inside that bottle rocket, the pressure of that gas is going to get uh, higher and higher, and it's going to get stronger and stronger and more powerful until eventually the force of that pressurized gas, carbon dioxide gas, is so strong that will actually force that rubber ball out of that opening in the bottle there and that carbon dioxide gas is going to be fired out of that uh, hole in the bottle is with a lot of force and of course since the bottle is going to be upside down that's going to mean it's going to be forced out of the bottom which will cause the rocket to be lifted high up into the air so it is the force of the escaping carbon dioxide gas that's actually going to cause lift for our rocket today so let's see how it goes, folks. Ready for liftoff.
Whew. Well, that was awesome. All right, my friends. So with that, we had ourselves a very successful bottle rocket launch today. So right now I'm pointing my camera at the launch site from where the rocket took off from. You can see all those bubbles that are still there. What we're seeing there is the result of the vinegar and the baking soda having mixed together in the bottle. And all those bubbles that we see, which are still kind of bubbling up and popping there, those bubbles are filled with carbon dioxide gas. It was the carbon dioxide gas released from that reaction uh, that caused the rocket to launch so high. In fact, if you recall, uh, the bottle ended up landing right over here, and I believe that was about a good, honestly, at least a good 15 or 20 feet, so that was a very good launch there. The bottle itself is still intact. Uh, I'm not sure where the rubber ball went. That rubber ball got forced out with a lot of pressure, which means I have no idea where that rubber ball ended up. It could be anywhere. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to spend some... Oh, you know what? I found it. It's right there. So I ended up way over there, folks. Ugh. Alrighty, so with that said, I do appreciate you guys joining us today for a successful bottle rocket launch. If you decide you wanted to try an experiment like this on your own, it's pretty easy to do, but just make sure you do it with uh, the supervision of your parents. Because while this experiment is not likely to be too dangerous, it certainly can be messy. That explosion caused a lot of vinegar to spray everywhere, so right now my yard is heavy with the scent of vinegar, so I'm probably going to have to hose it down. That said, folks, once again, thank you for joining us today. I hope it was fun. Take care. And enjoy the rest of your science today.